Next, we're going to look at how the cross product relates to angles, right? So um, you might recall, let's throw this up as a reminder here. That the dot product satisfies the following formula, right? Magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine of the angle between them. Right? Um, and so here we have something very similar, except it's sine theta instead of cos theta. Um, and of course, um, that's not necessarily going to give us the, the cross product as a whole. It can only give us the magnitude, because the cross product is a vector, whereas this is certainly a scalar quantity over here. Um, one thing you might be worried about is that magnitude needs to be positive, and we have a sine function. But remember that theta Theta is between 0 and pi. Sine is positive on that interval. Right? Um, so we don't have to worry about um, the magnitude becoming negative here. That sine theta will always be positive or, or possibly 0. And we also see that if, you know, where is it 0? At 0 and at pi. Um, there we see again that, that parallel property, right? If the vectors are parallel, so if they point in either the same directions, so theta is zero, or opposite directions, so theta is pi, um, the cross product is going to be zero. All right. Um, we're not going to go through the details of the proof on this one because, uh, well, it's not necessarily a subtle proof. It's just long. It's messy. It's kind of it, like the algebra is kind of complicated and, and I don't think it's really instructional for us to necessarily um, sit through it here in the video. It is something that is worth your time to work through once in your life. Just to do it and convince yourself and see where this comes from. It, it's a worthwhile, if, you know, if if you really despise doing algebra, then skip it. But if you, if you are the sort of person who likes kind of making it through a, a, a long slog of algebra and getting that answer to fall out at the end, it's a good calculation to do. It's worth trying. Uh, and, and the way you would prove this is um, you would work with the square of the magnitude, right? So you, you, we have a formula for the cross product, and you kind of plug it in. And, and so you, you do the square of the magnitudes. So you got to do the sum of the squares of the, of the components of the cross product, right? And now each of those is a binomial with two terms. So when you square it, it's going to get bigger, right? Four terms per component. So there's like 12 terms there. You got to multiply it all out. You got to simplify. Um, and, and then on the other side, you're going to do the magnitude of u squared times the magnitude of v squared. Uh, there's, you know, there's a fair amount of work to do to play around and get things to, to simplify. But actually, one of the things that is going to pop out when you do it, um, you're going to see this, this show up. You're going to see it show up. Um, and, and, and ultimately, what's going to happen is you're going to, if you, when you do the square of the magnitude of, of u cross v, you're going to get the magnitude of u squared is going to show up, magnitude of v squared is going to show up, and the dot product is going to show up as well. Um, and, and more or less what's going to happen if you go through the whole process and you simplify is, is you're going to apply this formula for the dot product, um, factor out all the magnitudes, and you're going to see that you're left with like a, a 1 minus cos squared, right? Um, you're going to get the dot product squared is going to be in there. Uh, and so you have a 1 minus cos squared, which of course is sine squared, and you take the square root of everything, and there you go. You've got your theorem. Uh, one of the, I think, reasons that this is a worth mentioning is that this is often a way that you can teach the cross product to, let's say, a maybe like a high school physics student who hasn't really learned the algebra yet necessary to like calculate through the components. Um, and, and so one of the things that you do is you would teach the cross product like this. You'd say, okay, I have two vectors, u and v. Um, and you would say, well, the cross product is defined by two things. One, the magnitude. Two, the direction. So how do we get the direction of the cross product from the two vectors? This is where one of those like right-hand rules comes in. And, and again, I'm mirrored. So I think uh, this is my right hand, but it probably looks like left to you. Um, 
But you kind of do the, you kind of, you point your hand in the direction of the first vector and you curl your fingers towards the second and then your thumb points in the direction of the cross product. And that kind of tells you, you should it be pointing up or, or down, right? We know it's got to be orthogonal to both of them. And the right hand rule kind of gives you the, well, is it orthogonal and up or orthogonal and down, right? And so you get that sort of picture there, right? Um, and so this is, if you want, this is another way of defining the cross product, right? Because to define a vector, you should give a magnitude and a direction. And so this formula gives the magnitude, this right-hand rule gives the direction, and, and there you have it. Okay, now, um, let's work through an example to see, see that this actually does work. Here is a calculation that we already did in a previous example. We calculated this cross product. Um, so let's look at the magnitudes of each of these vectors. The magnitude of u, we get the square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 6 squared. So that's the square root of 46. The magnitude of v is going to be the square root of 1 squared, right? Because minus sign goes away plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. Well, that's just the square root of 6. The magnitude of the cross product, that's a bit bigger, right? Um, we've got uh, 9 squared, 7 squared, 5 squared. So 9 squared is 81 plus 49. So 81 plus 49 is 90 plus 40, 130 plus 25, 155. Okay, so we've got those. Um, oh, but we need, how do we get the angle? Well, actually we know how to get the angle because um, we know how to get the angle from the dot product. We know that u dot v, u dot v, is going to be um, minus 1, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 6, 6 times 6, 6 times 1 is 6, so that's 11, all right? Okay, uh, so we know that uh, cos theta will be 11 divided by root 46, times root 6. Okay, so um, sine theta will be the square root of 1 minus cos squared theta. So it's going to be the square root of 1 minus 121 over 46 times 6. And yeah, I know we could have just put it in a calculator by now, but where's the fun in that? Um, 6 times 46, uh, 240 plus 36, 276. Oh, under the square root. So when we subtract that off, we're going to get ah, square root of 155 over the square root of 46 times the square root of 6. Okay, so there's sine theta. Now if I multiply by magnitude of u and magnitude of v, well those are going to cancel, those are going to cancel, I'm going to be left with the square root of 155, which is exactly what I'm supposed to get.